morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bishop, First Lady. Amen. Elder Prater. Uh, the absence of the Lady of the First, nope, uh, Mother Jones and uh, Overseer Spielman. And Minister Tanner. And everybody over the internet. Amen. I thank God for being here this morning. I don't take this lightly of being here. Amen. I want to thank my bishop first for this opportunity to get up here and uh, try to encourage somebody this morning as well as encourage myself. Amen. And, uh, I want to start out with this short prayer before I get started. God, I thank you right now for allowing me to be up here and try to live your word with you the problem in me. God, I thank you in advance for speaking through me. You surely have a way. Yes, have a way. yes, have a yes. I pray the word the way you have to talk yes. to me. Thank you in advance. Amen. 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 I, I think I'm only supposed to have 15 or 20 minutes. And I'm going to try to shorten some of this. Because the more I talked about it last night, the more energetic I got, the more passionate I got about it. Um, I did an inspiration on a word about, about probably six months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And it kind of stuck with me, and it kind of still is with me, so I'm going to briefly go over that. But my title today is, Who is Jesus? All right. Um, my main scripture is Matthew 16 and 13, 13 for it first, and I'm coming from King James Version. Um, the other scripture that I'll be pulling is Mark 8, chapter 27, verse through the 29th. Luke's the ninth verse, ninth chapter, I'm sorry, 18th verse through 20. So it starts out by saying, um, Matthew 16 and 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am, the Son of Man? And I know who God is. I hope you all know who God is. Yes. So I first want to start off by just a little brief what I talked about six months ago. And I think my title was Don't Throw in the Child. Mm -hmm. And I took it from Job, I want to say Job 2 and 13. And then I think I jumped over to 42 and something um, toward the end. Now, Job was an outstanding man in the Bible. He was rich. He had everything. Um, I guess that he wanted. He had a huge family. He had lots of land. And he also had, um, he, just, he had everything. And the Bible, I think, says uh, the word he was a shrewd man, which means he was a praying man. He was a, a man that, was, that feared God, which we should be. He said we fear everything else except God. So, um, in it, I was looking back through it, and it says that it was a day when the um, devil came and he was just looking for somebody to mess with. I'm yeah. paraphrasing. This is not how the Bible says so I'm paraphrasing. Uh -huh. what mean. So he said he was just See? looking for somebody to mess with. So he said, uh, I got somebody. God said, I got somebody. Uh, try my servant, Joe. So he said, oh, he's a good man. He's a strong man. You won't be able to handle him. So the devil said, oh, Everybody pretty much would be bought with a price. So I bet I could get it. Oh, yeah. So he said, do everything that you can do to him, but spare his life. Yes. That's what God said. Yes, this is yes. Paraphrase. Right. So he did. As the story goes, I think there was a gathering at uh, Job's house with all his kids. Mm -hmm. And then they departed and went on about their way. And then I don't know if it was the day before or day after or a week after or whatever it was. But at any rate, um, the kids got together, I think, at an older sibling's house. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, a storm came in, and there was a loss of land. He lost his land. Somebody came and knocked on the door and told Joe, you've lost your land. Well, Joe, if it was one of us, oh, Lord, the world's coming to an end. But Joe didn't do that. He was just, okay, well, I lost the land. Next thing I know, uh, there was another knock on the door. I think that the other man was still there, but a knock came on the door to tell him that um, while in the midst of that, he also lost all his cattle. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, now, mind you, Joe had all the cattle in the world. I don't know, but he said he had, they said he had a lot. So that was a second hit for Joe he had lost. Then the third time, somebody came and knocked and he said, um, I hate to tell you, now you've lost all your kids. So this man, in, no matter, in, a, in a short period of time, again, I don't know the exact time frame, but it was a short period of time he lost everything. Instead of Joe cursing God, he didn't curse God, but he fell down on his knees. That's mm -hmm. not what we did. When things like this go wrong, mm -hmm. they, uh, problem after problem after problem go wrong, that ain't the first thing that we do. Nope. First thing that we do, we want to curse God and say, oh, Lord, why me? Why this happened to me? I live right. I do this. I do that. But God, but Joe got down on his knees, and he started praying like he should have. He started praying. And I'm just going to say, I think he may have said, God, I'm hurt. Help me through this. Yes. That's what we should have said. Yes. Because we're supposed to pray our way through when we're in a crisis like that. Amen. So all this is going on. And the devil just keeps on throwing things at him because he's sure by now. He's going to break by now. He done, he done took his kids. He took his land. And he done took all of his cattle. So then, if that wasn't enough, his wife is saying that seeing all of this go on. She ain't saying nothing, but I'm sure if she's one of us, she got some <laughs> words underneath her breath. <laughs> go ahead and curse it, dummy. I don't know why you're still serving me. But that's not what she said. What she said was, when he was in the midst of his, um, I want to say depression, not really depression, but his grief process. He was in the midst of his grief. Um, he also ended up having these scabs or boils. The Bible didn't say exactly what they were, but they were sores on his feet. So he was in the middle. I'm going to say it was in his living room because that's where I would be. <laughs> he was in the middle of his living room on the floor. Mm -hmm. And I guess he was crying. Mm -hmm. And he had some kind of utensil in his home. And he was scraping these things himself. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine having some pain on my feet, first of all, like that, and then try to scrape it yourself. Mm. That's when his wife came in and said, um, you old foolish man. You no, know, she said, uh, how, what are you going to do now? Uh, how, where's your God at now? Something to that effect. You still going to continue to praise him after all, all of this that he's done? Joe turned around and said, woman, you sound foolish. You don't sound like my wife. Because she hadn't said anything before. But apparently there was some kind of religious relationship between the two because he wouldn't have said that. You don't sound like my wife. You're foolish. And mm -hmm. what makes you think after all that I've been through mm -hmm. and after all God has given me, mm -hmm. what makes you think I'm going to curse God now? Because everything that I am, I'm, I am because of God. Yes, so Lord. I'm not going to curse God. If anything, I'm going to praise him. Yes, because something yes, good is getting yes, ready to happen. Yes. So that's what we're supposed to do. Yes. When things go wrong, we need to sit back and wait. Trust God that there's something else better ahead for us. We might not understand what's going on. We might not understand that ever. But you've got to trust God when we're going through this. That's right. So that's if, right. Uh, I don't know how long after this, when he did that, it says that um, something happened, and when, when Job prayed for his friend, then that's when God decided to give him double for his trouble. So I don't know how many cattle he had. I'm going to paraphrase again and say he had 20,000. So now he got 40,000. I don't think Job was a young man either, so I don't know how many kids he had. If he had 14, he had 28. I'm not sure I wanted 28 kids, but God blessed him double for his trouble. Same thing with his land. How many acres did he have? If he had 50, now he got 100 acres. He blessed him double for his trouble. And all I'm saying this for is we have to stay focused. Uh -huh. We have to stay faithful. That's right. We have to trust God through it all, mm -hmm. no matter what we're going through. Yes, in yes, the darkest yes. days, we still have to trust God. Yes, now, yes. I just wanted to put a little uh, dick on that and now I'm going to go forward with what I want to talk about today because I think it ties into that. All right. Now, the title is, Who is Jesus? And the scripture I took it from, like I said, was Matthew 16 and 13. Mm -hmm. um, I pulled some scriptures out of the Bible that they're, I say they're miracles because nobody else could do it but God. It's Amen. one of those situations that you say, oh, didn't nobody do that but God. 
But then you hear those people that I don't really care for that say, oh, he lucky. Well, I ain't nobody lucky. It's, right. of the, it's of God. It's That's grace right. and mercy by that which you got. Amen. So I'm going to take the it's John 2nd, 1st, 1st, and 11. He turned water into wine. Who else would do that? Nobody but God. There's Matthew 8, 1 and 4. He healed the man with leprosy. How many of y'all know what leprosy is? Well, it's not fun. You know what uh, foot and mouth disease is? Mm -hmm. It's 10 times worse than that. And back in the day, I'm told that they treated those people like they were an outcast, so you wasn't even allowed to mingle with other people. Just like TV, when you had TV back in the day, they sent you away somewhere so you couldn't mingle. Paul said it was contagious. So he healed a man with leprosy. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I have is Luke. 8, 22 and 25. He commanded the winds to be still. And what they say, uh, what manner of man is this that even the winds obey? Nobody but God. Amen. Uh, there is Matthew 9, 27 and 31. He heals the blind. Uh, Luke 1 and 45. He raises Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. Matthew 2 and 29 through 34. He restores blind Bartimaeus. Restoration. Uh, Matthew 9, 1, and 8. It was the paraplegic that they had to, uh, I guess there was a church service going on where Jesus was healing and teaching, and the church was so filled that this one man needed to get in. He knew that God was the answer. Mm -hmm. So what they did, there was a hole in, I don't know if they cut a hole out of the, the, the church ceiling, but they lowered him down mm -hmm. on some kind of makeshift something so that he could get there and he could be healed. God healed him. Mm -hmm. Amen. The next one I have is Matthew 12 and 40. Uh, Jonah in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Now, I, that part right there kind of stunned me. But first of all, how did Jonah get in the belly of the whale? He had to be bit. When you were in the ocean and the thing is coming to you, it bites you and takes you in. But that's not what happened with Jonah. It's almost like somebody opened the whale's mouth, put him down in there in a little decent place where not, no hurt or harm came to him. They said he stayed there three days and three nights, and then he got spewed out. Nobody but God can do something like that. Nobody but God. Amen. There's Daniel 6 and 22. When uh, uh, they were in the lion's den, nobody but God, they, they came out of the uh, lion's den using lions as a pillow. Who does that? Nobody but God. And my last but not least is uh, Daniels 3, 16, and 28. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. This is the most impressive one to me. And I keep on laughing because I, I thought about when Calvin, Bishop Calvin was up here. He said something else a little bit different when he said these right here, these three guys' names. But they got thrown into the fiery furnace because they refused to do what the king said. The king told them that he was, they were going to idolize the, uh, these little whatever ornaments or whatever you want to call them. That's what they did. They want to idolize. He said, no, I only have one God and, I'm gonna, I, I, and I, that's who I'm going to serve. serve. That's what these three Hebrew boys said. They're going to serve him. So when he said that, that made the king mad and said, okay, throw him in the furnace and turn it up seven times hotter. Well, I don't know about you all. Just this past month, year, me and David have been going through it with, a, with our furnace, our air conditioner. This heat is no joke. I'm not going to hell. I can't stand it. This heat is something else. So for somebody to be turned up in a furnace seven times and they came out, it wasn't touched. And yes. I, I'm paraphrasing again. Oh my God. I hear the king came down that day and because the man told him, he said, uh, God will be with us. So when the king came down, I can just hear him being cocky saying, oh boys, Oh, boys, where's your God at? Did mm. God save you from the fire? Mm. Oh, boys, where you at? Well, he couldn't see around the curve, but when he got there, one of them spoke up and said, yes, we're all here. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the king said, he turned around and looked and he said, uh, I see, I thought I put 
put three men in here. He said, we did. We put three men in there. Now, these men were bound. I'm thinking when they're bound, their legs were tied together. I'm not sure, but their legs were tied together, and they were thrown in there with all of their clothes in a furnace. So what does the fire do when you got clothes on? When you don't have clothes, you should have been singed their clothes. You should have smelt it before you walked around the corner. But instead, when he came around and he seen four people, yes. that threw him off. Well, who was the fourth person? Uh -huh. The man said, the uh, uh, like meat Chuck said that God is always with us. Yes. It was Jesus. Yes. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Mm. And he was right there all the time. Thank you, they Jesus. Out, Thank you, they, Jesus. They said they didn't smell. But their clothes wasn't stinky. They what didn't have what they call suck on. They didn't have nothing on. That ain't nobody but Jesus. Nobody. This is little nobody. areas that I just pulled out. In case you don't know God, nobody can read your Bible. This right here are miracles. And if he did it back then, what makes you think he, can he won't do it, do it again? again? Amen. You know, I have to respect the person Amen. who he blesses. He blesses you. He'll bless Amen. you. He'll bless me. And we're supposed to be happy when one of the other ones get blessed. That's so right. right around the corner. Because I told him the other day, I got another car. Uh, somebody over here got a, uh, another Mercedes. I said, oh, yeah, I got me another car. So now I got me three cars. <laughs> so last but not least, I just want to go over a few Beautiful. more things to yeah. let you just know what he is in my life and how I knew it wasn't nobody but God. And uh, the last scripture that I wanted to say was Exodus 3 and 14. He says, I am. Mm -hmm. I am. That's all he has to say. Yes. Can you imagine just walking into a room and there don't need to be any introduction? Mm -hmm. Because he's I am. Yes. What does I am mean? It means just that. I don't need no introduction. I don't have no other title. But I am. If you want me to be a lawyer, I'm your lawyer in the courtroom. If you want me to be a doctor, I'm your doctor in the yes. courtroom. Yes. Mother to the mother. Yes. I'm a bridge over yes. troubled water. Yes. And God knows he's that, he definitely is that. Amen. In my life, I want to go back to 2015. 2015 was my time. Started Sorry. on 2014. But they counted me out. The doctors counted me out. They said I had metastatic cancer that had metastasized to my lung, to my aorta. I was in and out of the hospital two and three times every month on inhalers. On steroids, had a um, uh, mechanical vest that they would put me on and just pound on me, pound on me. I had to go to therapy, uh, cardiac rehab. They did uh, cardiac uh, therapy on me and uh, lung therapy on me. They told me that I had this, and they before that they had told me that I had sarcoidosis. Well, I didn't have that. I told them I said no, I don't. But because I'm not a doctor. I had to let this physician treat me. He put me on a high, high dose of methotrexate. He started tapering me down. I started falling. I swelled up. I gained 80 pounds in less than a month. And that wasn't for me. So I finally got enough courage to tell this doctor I ain't doing that no more. I want to be sent to a thoracic surgeon so they can find out what's going on in my life. Well, we did. As soon as I got in to see Dr. Sandpath, um, he said, Shirley, where you been? I looked at your PET scan. Mm -hmm. I looked at your CT scan. I looked at all your labs. He said, honey, you have metastatic lung cancer. He said, we're going to do a procedure called a right thoracotomy with a vast. Now, I've been a nurse for 37 years. It wasn't then. But now it's 37 years. When they told me I had cancer, I was working on the oncology unit. I knew that I didn't have cancer because the people that come in there, they're sick. I wasn't that sick. I just had a problem with my lungs. I never claimed it. I don't consider my Amen. faith back then Amen. nowhere near what it is now. Yes. But I had it right here. I had what they say, how it's hidden in your heart. Mm -hmm. Well, I had it there because my mom and my dad, they instilled it in me. I didn't know back then, but I do know now. 
somebody was praying for me other than myself. So they told me this. The man said, if you're going to be an open and closed case. I said, no, I'm not. And they sent me to a psychiatrist because I, I guess I had a flat effect and I wasn't accepting it. But how many of you, when you know that you know, yes, yes. how many people they can stay to you? That's right. So I spoke over myself, I spoke directly to them, and told them I don't have that. Mm -hmm. When they took me in, did the surgery, I woke up in SICU, I remember my friend, Dr. E, woke me up and said, Shirley, you was right, you don't have cancer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I remember a tear just was dropping Hallelujah. from my face, and I shook my head, yes. She said, what you do have is a horrible fungus. It's called histoplasmosis. That's another story. With that, my lungs are messed up, yes, but I'm still here. Amen. I'm Amen. still here by the grace of God. Amen. Yes, I've gained weight and keep on gaining weight because every now and then I still have to go get put on PO steroids. I get put on IV steroids and I have IV or PO or inhalers that have steroids in it. But I'm still here. Amen. Amen. I'm still here because I stood on his word. Amen. When everybody else mm. said I did have it, I listened to God. Mm -hmm. See, he, I know his voice. Mm -hmm. He knows my voice. Yes. And all he wants you to do is listen. Yes. Listen to him. Yes. Trust in him. The other thing was back in 2020, my daughter was in a really bad car wreck out in Virginia. Told her car. Air blood, air uh, things all deployed. Nothing. Walked away with no scratches. Praise God. Who's that? Nobody's about. Because I give credit to God. That's the only person I can give credit to. Because when my kids leave from me every single day, every night, I say, God, okay. put a shield of protection around yes. me. Yes. Let no hurt, harm, or danger yes. come near me. And he brings them back to me. And I thank him on a daily basis. Then, was it 2012, the derecho storm that we had, or the derecho storm we had, it tore the back of my house up. There's trees all in the back of my next to a neighbor's house and in my yard. Trees start blowing, trees coming down. David's one of those people that you got to protect everything, no matter what. He ain't going to get hurt. He's going to run out there. When the wind's blowing 60, 70 miles an hour, I'm not running out there. My door was shut, and I was away from the window. Nope, not David. Here he runs down the stairs, runs out on my back deck. We had a gazebo and had a, um, what's it called, um, an umbrella. Oh, people say the gazebo. I didn't care about the gazebo. I didn't care about the umbrella. You get another one you want. He tries to go out there and zip and, unzip the gazebo and do something. The tree falls on him. You know how scary that is? I'm sitting there looking at him. I can't get him. I can't get up out of the tree. I'm sitting there watching him. I yelled for my son. Darian comes running out there. Had it not been for my son being there, I don't know what would happen because I surely couldn't get him. And I don't know how fast the Jesus. emergency places were Jesus. responding because we were Jesus. in a state of emergency. Jesus. So I said that because I want to say be careful what you wish for your kids also. Because, see, my child, he was here back in 2015, just came home from uh, WVU. He's supposed to be a lawyer. He had three more classes to take. Hmm. When he heard that doctor come in there that day and said I had metastatic cancer, he lost it. Lost it, had an uh, asthma attack. That one, he had one too, had a meltdown. I'm sitting there in the bed, have a 100% non rebreather on, and I'm having to calm them two down. Of course, that doctor's not there no more, but, uh, but that's beside the point. Be careful. We may want something for our kids. That's not what God's plan is. So he is right where he's supposed to be yes. at my house. That's where he's supposed to be. And last but not least, in 2018, this is how he worked as a lawyer, a protector mm. for me. 
somehow in the system, we have to uh, apply for our registered uh, uh, nurse's license every year. I did it with my little roommate, my social worker. Same time, did it. Did it through. Hers went through, mine didn't. I worked a whole year without a license. Mm, mm. Didn't know it until I went to apply again. And then I get told, you have to leave because you don't have a license. Nobody in where I work could tell me what am I supposed to do? Just sit home and do nothing? That's pretty much what I did for like two weeks because nobody, I mean nobody, had ever went through this and nobody knew anything about it. But God did. God sent me up to the nursing board. I'm standing there talking to some lady who totally ignored me and said, have a seat. We'll get to you when we can. I did. Then this other lady came out. That was just like She came out and said, honey, how long have you been waiting? About an hour. Gabriel was with me. Said about an hour. She said, what are you waiting on? Oh, by this time this lady jumps up. Oh, I was getting ready to get her. I said, no, she wasn't. She told me to wait. The lady takes me back in there and asks me what I was there for. And I tell her exactly what I was there for and what they had told me. I had to pay a fine. And I couldn't work until this day and this day right here. At that point, I'd been off work for like a month. So she said, huh. They told me I had to pay a fine of $3,000 right then and uh, $100 for every day that I had worked without a license. Yeah. Yeah, I think I ended up paying $5,000. But they told me I had to pay this all at one time but not this lady that came in there. This is how God works. Because that other one, she didn't care less. And she showed me she could, but God sent somebody else in there. And she said, no, you don't have to pay that. You can pay that, but you pay it in increments. Don't tell me God ain't good. Don't tell me God ain't good. Because who else does that? Yes. Because when we stay faithful and we listen to him, and we do what we're supposed to do on a daily basis, hmm. he don't leave us, we leave him. Huh. That's what happens is, you know, they say, oh, that was back then when he did all that. When he did all these miracles and all these blessings and all that, that was back then when he did that. Still, He's still in control. Yes, he still yes. is God. He yes. still yes. is God. Yes. We are the oh, one to yes. We're the one to yes. stop praying. We're the, we're the one to stop praying because one day we ask for something and he... He said no or didn't give it to us, so we decided to pout and decide we ain't going to do anything else again that has God involved because he don't, he don't care about me and he ain't going to do what this for me and he don't do that. Well, uh, you can stop doing that if you want to. What about you? Because uh, it ain't working for you. It ain't working for you. That's what I've been here. It ain't working for me. I don't have that kind of relationship. It ain't working for me. Well, whatever else you're doing ain't working for you, so how about stop that? My God. All I can say is God is real. Yes. Try God. Yes. If you don't know him, huh. read your Bible. Right. Follow your purpose. Follow huh. what God has tell, told you to do. Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. Mm -hmm. He has a voice, and it ain't a loud voice. It's a still voice, a still, soft mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. And tell you that right there. That's the scariest thing when you hear from him, when you know you done did something wrong. It ain't a loud voice. Sometimes I wish it was a loud voice, but it's not. But I thank you for your time. Amen. I thank you. I hope I bless somebody. I bless myself. I know that. But I thank God for this.